Because if we look at somebody who finished their degree in 1980, mm -hmm. and they still want to tell, you know, people that graduated recently, um, yes, and they do have experience and all of those things, but if they haven't kept current with their knowledge set, their knowledge is redundant. You can't uh, not believe in lifelong learning. So really to be adaptable to entering the global world, not just looking locally to what opportunities exist here, because we know we've got the fourth highest youth unemployment rate in the world. Graduate unemployment rate vacillates between 10 and 15%. So we can see that the investment in education is critical. We must be realistic right now. You yes. can't get a job anymore with matric. They're, those days are gone. Definitely. So, so, you know, as much as people get higher certificates and diplomas, you'll see if you open a newspaper, the most entry-level positions now require a degree or NQF level uh, 7. The Groundbreakers, Mondays to Thursdays, Mondays to Thursdays, 7 to 9 p.m. on TUT FM. FM. My name is Polelo and Madisa, and tonight on the ground breakers or on plug a graduate, we have a very thought provoking uh, discussion, right? Lined up for you. Tonight, we'll be joined by the managing director of uh, the Independent Institute of Education, Rosebank College, Dr. Linda Mayer. We'll be discussing how to navigate through different careers from multiple qual uh, qualifications. Uh, one would say the benefits of multiple uh, qualifications, right? And now to introduce uh, Dr. Mayer, Dr. Linda Mayer is the managing director at the Independent Institute of Education, Rosebank College. She holds a Doctor of Philosophy and a Doctor of Business Administration, among many other qualifications. She is actively involved in various community committees and boards. Dr. Mayer has also served on numerous governance structures, including the South African Magistrate Commission and the Commission of Conciliation, Mediation, Arbitration, formerly known as CCMA. Uh, Dr. Linda Mayer, good evening and welcome to the Grand Breakers. Good evening. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Right. Uh, tonight we're diving into a subject that shapes the future, right? Uh, choosing and exploring different fields of study. Education is just not, uh, not about something, learning or something, but also understanding the world through different lenses. Now, to break the ice, just want to ask this question. In a world where everything is changing rapidly, from technology to job markets, how important is it for students to explore a variety of study fields than focusing narrowly on one discipline? Well, we must understand that the world of work, as you said rightfully, is changing. And the United Nations uh, and the World Bank have both told us that the grade ones that are in grade one right now, by the time they finish grade 12, 85% of the jobs that they, you know, that exist currently would have changed significantly into the future. Yeah. So it's it's about having a multiple discipline uh, in your in your basket of qualifications so that you're agile that it doesn't matter what, you know, we can't just look at commerce on its own anymore. If you True. don't understand ICT, you're going to have a problem because everything runs around systems and adaptability. If we look at medical, you know, medical degrees uh, without technology, you know, medical technologists, yes. uh, we see that operations are being done thousands of kilometers uh, away in China, for example. Um, so, so this adaptive skill set that we will require is very important. And also, we can't just instantly look at, 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 at disciplines anymore, like engineering, et cetera. For people that want to run their own businesses one day, if they don't have the commerce background to facilitate that uh, knowledge uh, transfer into mm -hmm. successful businesses, they're going to have a problem. Definitely true. And now with new career paths emerging, right, from AI ethics to environmental consulting, what trends are you seeing in terms of fields of study that are becoming more popular and what should students consider when choosing to pursue a career and uh, pursuing a second qualification in those? Well, certainly there are emerging fields, uh, as you name. The green technology is obviously one of those, the, the green um, environment. Mm -hmm. uh, so solar, uh, wind technology, uh, battery power technology, all of these sort of uh, nuances are emerging. Uh, and then also, obviously, in the fields of ICT, those are always adaptable. So AI currently is running off large language models, which means it doesn't think for itself. But in, in further iterations, we are going to see that that technology advances and that we need those skill sets to be current. Because if we look at somebody who finished their degree in 1980, mm -hmm. and they still want to tell, 
you know, people that graduated recently. Um, yes, and they do have experience and all of those things, but if they haven't kept current with their knowledge set, their knowledge is redundant. You can't uh, not believe in lifelong learning, upping your skills, keeping current. And that is why I'm a big advocate of these massive online open courses through mm -hmm. Harvard mm -hmm. X, uh, edX, free courses, absolutely free, free with the top universities of the world. So it's important that we are engaged in, in multiple of these different fields as we study, but also the importance of language because we're in a global economy now. So when we see apps like Duolingo, for example, yes, where people want to go and do their masters in Japan because it's obviously paid for and they get a stipend when they're there or in one of the Scandinavian countries. So really to be adaptable to entering the global world, not just looking locally to what opportunities exist here, because we know we've got the fourth highest youth unemployment rate in the world. Graduate unemployment rate vacillates between 10 and 15%. So we can see that the investment in education is critical, but unfortunately, more than 50% of graduates don't go and work in the field that they studied as their True. first jobs. True. Yes. So that's a problem. Yeah, and, and definitely it is. And you speaking of Japan, I've seen in most instances it's leading. It's one of the greatest leading countries. And I just want to ask, because we've seen tradition, traditional jobs evolving or even disappearing, could you say that a student's flexibility in studying multiple or different subjects could be their greatest asset? Absolutely. So, so obviously there's the base qualification. So your undergrad and, and, and we must be realistic right now. You yes. can't get a job anymore with matric. That, those days are gone. Definitely. So, so, you know, as much as people get higher certificates and diplomas, you'll see if you open a newspaper, the most entry level positions now require a degree or NQF level uh, seven. I mean, that is asked for by employers. So if you are qualified in more than one discipline, it means that an employer can take you in because you have a particular, particular knowledge set and that stands far above other people that are applying. So if there's 20 people applying and you're the one with the most advanced skill set and the most varied skill set, it mm -hmm. means that you are the most adaptable in the workplace. And also, you know, as, as the world changes, as we start uh, seeing technologies emerge, uh, new careers emerge, if you already have that underpinning knowledge base, you certainly will stand, it will stand you in good stead. Now, and as a question that we've been discussing with my team before we go to the show earlier on, we were speaking to say, what do you think, uh, do you think success today is more about following one's passion or do we still need to prioritize stability in career choices? And what role do you think multiple qualifications play in giving one stability? Well, the issue around passion, you know, I think there's a misnomer where people say, follow your passion and you'll never work a day in your life because sometimes yes. a passion doesn't, is not economically viable. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we need to be realistic about that. Uh, but with multiple skill sets, if if you if you enjoy varied fields, um, and th that is what's going to bring the opportunities for you, and you can then mm -hmm. be selective around those opportunities that best uh, suits you, suits your lifestyle, suits the way that you want to operate, the way that you want to work, um, and that will then assist you because. You know, many people just resign from jobs because they're unhappy and then they're unemployed mm -hmm. for 12 months. And it's not just they, them that suffers, it's entirely f families that are impacted. So as much as you've got a passion, make sure that you're pragmatic about that. So you can do your job, do your sideline, you know, your side, uh, your side hustle, side, one we side hustle yeah. on the side. Because remember, the golden rule is you need to, for six months, earn equivalent to your salary before you can resign. You mm -hmm. can't just after one or two months think you've done absolutely well and now you're going to, you know, throw in, uh, resign. Yes. Because it's, you know, next, the, the third month you have a bad month. So you need to, to be mindful about basic business principles. If you have an entrep entrepreneurial uh, inkling and that's what you want to pursue. But if there's a job that you want to pursue, mm -hmm. make sure that, you, that you're qualified in many things. You'll know yourself. Many people study a particular field. They start working in that field and it's not what they expected. True. Um, so, so really what is important to you? The questions are around, do you like being self-directed or do you like being micromanaged? Yeah. Do you yeah. like 
to to work uh, you know have is your time important to you so so those things also become important as you start thinking about career choices uh, because once you're in the workplace you'll know when you when you're running a company you're working 18 hours a day seven days a week and not mm -hmm, everybody mm -hmm. wants that for their life True, they definitely. want work-life balance but you you must be realistic you can't run a big company and think that that's or, or have a successful business if you're not willing to invest the time true that, that and, is that is for sure yeah and i just wanted to know in your opinion right what sets apart a sought after individual with multiple qualifications from an overqualified individual after being rejected by employers well the thing about qualifications is and you'll speak to most employers and most employers will say to you a qualification is just a way to screen a cv Mm -hmm. But what they employ for is attitude. So when they interview somebody and they can see this person is willing to get their foot in the door, um, that they're willing to learn and that you demonstrate that during your interview process, because you can't know somebody from an interview. True. But that is a, a short period for you to have an impactful time with a potential uh, you know, recruit, recruiter in an organization to set out your skill set. So what are those? So speak to your future your future vision speak to things that are important to you but critically speak to those things that you know employers want they want people that are mm -hmm. dedicated are hungry will work to get to the top have an ambition for themselves want to improve themselves and employers look very favorably on people that are engaged in lifelong learning so it's not just about having multiple disciplines but short courses you know these MOOCs we spoke about yes all of these things so that you current right now, you didn't study IT five years ago, you haven't done any of these top up courses and, and you want to set yourself forward as somebody that knows what's going on, has got adaptable skills because mm -hmm. your actions in not studying further and upping your skills tells an employer a very different thing when, when they speak to you. Definitely. And we hear a lot about the importance of long life learning. And you did mention also that. So what role did that play in helping you to obtain your multiple qualifications? And how should students approach their education with that mindset, especially when choosing a new field of study? And while we are still there, please talk to us about the role of multiple qualifications in, proof, in future proofing one's career. Right. So so in, in terms of having multiple qualifications, first of all, most people finish an undergraduate, maybe they do an honors, maybe they do a master's, right? Yeah. A PhD is really for people that want to go and work in academia. Yes. So, and that's the reality. I mean, for some people, it's nice to have, you want to do that. But for employers, that is not the most important thing. Mm -hmm. The most important thing for them is around the master's degree. So you'll often see that people that are professionals will do multiple master's qualifications, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so, so. What, why is the so what is it that why is it that you want to get a phd yes um, and so that's the question right mm -hmm. so what is important for employers is experience but adaptability in your skill set so lifelong learning so mm -hmm. if if you are doing short learning programs it doesn't mean that when you have a phd that employers are going to view you um, in a more favorable light often they view you in a less favorable light because they see you as an academic. They ask themselves, uh, so you must understand the environment that you're in, not uh, if you're in the accounting, obviously the most important thing in accounting is that you get your professional certification, your CTA or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. So that there you'll find that very few people in the accounting domain will go on to do PhDs unless they in research or they're working in universities because they don't need it. Mm. In the IT field, People, the most important thing is, yes, get your degree, but what will every employer ask you? Where's your Microsoft certifications? Where's your Cisco yes. certifications? Where's your CompTIA certifications? So you need to understand the market that you're in and what employers are looking for, because that adaptability and agility with top tier skills, global competitive skills is what they want. Now, Dr. May, I believe that pursuing a second qualification isn't something that one can take lightly or do blindly so. Now, talk to us about what informs one's decision to transition into a different field, right? Take us to a time when you had only one qualification and tell us what inspired you to get a second qualification. And also, how much research went into identifying the second qualification that you wanted to pursue? 
sorry. So the first qualification I did was in business. Apologies, I had a coughing. No problem. Please do continue. It reminded me of COVID there for a minute. <laughs> but I, I studied um, I studied business, and what I saw is in most of the fields that I was in, the employers wanted to know what my legal depth was, mm -hmm. what understanding I had around the legal domain. So it made logical sense for me then to move on and get a law qualification. Yeah. So it has bring it's bring uh, it's brought a depth to my skill set. But then as I moved on, as I became, uh, as I got higher management positions, as I started leading organizations, the key question was around the financial and the business acumen at a master's level. So I had to pursue degrees in those particular fields. And then I obviously went on. Um, and then it was about, I did my doctorate in business administration. Obviously, I did many other qualifications, diplomas, higher certificates, mm -hmm. all the time, just to keep current skill sets. But when I did the doctorate in business administration, which I did um, through an American institution, it was it was very taxing because, it, you, you know, you work exceptionally hard when you do yes. a professional degree. When you do a, a philosophy doctorate, obviously, you know, you write a, a, a thesis, and and that's that's enjoyable. So people do that for joy. You do true, that because it's true. a culmination of 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 your knowledge of a particular field that you've spent so much time in that you have passion for, um, and that is a wonderful experience when you get to that space that you can then pursue. So I've I mean I've studied absolutely everything from mm -hmm. labor law to HR to I mean you name it I really have done it marketing. Uh, operations. Uh, I've absolutely done all of those those fields. And for me, it's about honing my skill set. Although I'm a leader in a higher education institution, um, we must understand that that there are business imperatives when you're in the private sector. You don't you don't have the luxury of taxpayers' money, and you need to make <laughs> sure that that the value proposition that you give to your students is 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 never veers away from quality. Uh, accessibility and ensuring that people can get a job at the end of that. So as a leader, you need to understand what your students are facing so that you can engage with industry, make sure that the qualifications are relevant, that they're not studying redundant content and that employers are seeking out those individuals mm -hmm. in emerging fields and that you keep adapt to what will be happening uh, in the future. I, I guess it is safe to say that you are a jerk of all trades, but uh, allow us to take this minute that we go to an ad break so that we could allow you to also have a class of vote and we also take a look at the things that's happening on the other side. So please hold on a minute while we take a quick ad break. Good evening once again and welcome back to another edition of Pracker Graduate right here on TUTF. Um, and, uh, we're still in conversation with Dr. Uh, Linda Mayer. Sorry for that. <laughs> and uh, she's the managing director at the Independent Institute of Education, the Rosebank College. And like we said before, she holds a doctor of philosophy and a doctor of business, business administra administration, among many other qualifications. And doctor, once again, good evening and welcome back. And to pick up where we left off, just wanted to understand to say, what challenges are students likely to face when transitioning from an entirely new field of study and how strategic planning and how can strategic planning help overcome those obstacles? Well, when you when you obviously move into a different field, yes. uh, there would be some some common modules um, that that would still exist. But for you to transition, please make sure that you do Go on to these courses that I spoke about, these massive online open courses on Harvard X, edX. Go and do uh, some of these short courses so yes. that you can understand the field. Prepare yourself for what is going on. Go on, you know, even if it's uh, they are free academic open source channels and familiarize yourself with the different content that you will be exposed to. So if you've made this decision to move into a different field, and it might be that you're moving from second year into something that, that you think is going to be more interesting, it might be that you're now moving on uh, you know, from your undergraduate that you did something and now you're going to do a business related degree, make sure that you understand what, what it involves and why it is that you're doing it. Uh, but Ooh, speak yeah. to people in the industry and the sector, make sure that whatever this new qualification is that you're pursuing, if it's just for interest, that's obviously fine. But if it is to advance your career prospects, speak to people in the sector to make sure that they assist you with supporting what sort of qualifications it is that you that you need to pursue. So 
it can't just be ICT qualification. It might be that you, you know, you need to specialize uh, in cybersecurity, nice. for example, or AI. Make sure that those skill sets are adaptable because it also doesn't help that you uh, uh, diverge into something else and it's not in the long term going to support your career, your career yeah. trajectory True. or yes, your plans no. for your life. Very understandable. And for those who have multiple qualifications in different fields of study, how can they highlight the transferable skills from diverse fields to potential employers or collaborators into the in, in interdisciplinary settings, especially when transitioning from academia to industry? Well, the first thing is when you when you enter, in, enter industry, the first thing they're going to ask you for, if it's not an entry level position, is experience. So make sure it's not just about saying I've got this, this, you know, I've got a law degree and I've got a business degree. It's about how you've applied that. So have you, for example, you know, volunteered at the at the law clinics? Have you, yeah. oh, uh, yes, for example, yeah. gone, you know, have you got a small business that is running? Are you volunteering? And you need to highlight those particular skill sets that you have acquired. So if you've led particular teams, you need to highlight those particular things um, and mm -hmm. that skill set around that qualification that you have manifested, you then need to uh, articulate clearly in, in your CV. Because employers aren't just going to look at the qualifications. Um, you know, they, they're going to want to see why it is that you're moving into this field. So when you do your, your uh, purpose statement in the beginning of your CV, yes. highlight those particular things and also explain why you've gone into a different field, why you have multiple qualifications. Because some employers also will think, you know, that that somebody can't make up their mind around what the field is that they that they want, they want to be to in. do. Yes. So so draw that nexus, draw that connection, and articulate why it is that you did this particular thing, so that you could advance your knowledge base in particular areas. So be be very clear when you we set that out for employers. And now, when you're speaking of prospects, right, how can uh, students set long-term career goals in diverse fields while maintaining direction and purpose? And what opportunities exist for professional growth and advancement in those multi-qualifications, with multiple qualifications? So, so we must understand that as you enter the, a, a particular career path, yes. the experience is what, what's going to elevate you to the next level. So if you have another qualification where you haven't had significant experience and you then want to diversify into that field, um, you would have to start, obviously, at the bottom. But if you are planning, so let's say, for example, you did a commerce degree, you did a law degree, because you understand you want to be in the top tier. You want to be an executive in a business. True. So you know that you've got the commerce background. Any employer that can see that you're on a managerial route mm -hmm. will see that that complementary qualification is going to set you apart because it brings a, a broad-based knowledge set that as a leader, as a, a manager in a business, sets you apart because now you know how to deal with labor law, for example. You mm -hmm. know how to deal with commercial contracts, uh, not just with the business of running a business. So marry it closely to that and then plan out, plot out your career where you want to be. If you don't have a plan, you need to know, and I ask all of my employees when I meet with them, what they're studying, what their plan is for the next three years, what mm -hmm. their plan is for the next five years, what their plan is for the next 10 years, and what is a good place is to work back. So think to yourself, what is it that you want to do? You want to be a business owner or you want to be a CEO of a listed organization? Mm -hmm. And then go and look at what the profiles are of, of those particular individuals, what they've studied, what experiences they've had in that journey and craft your similarly to that, so that you have a clear path that has been successful for, for multiple people in following that particular route. Definitely true. And I have to understand that moving from qualification to qualification can be quite demanding, especially for those who are currently laborers. We have to strike an impeccable balance between working and studying. How can individuals prioritize self-care, maintain a healthy work-life balance, and manage stress while pursuing diverse professional endeavors? Well, if you want to, if you want to study, um, you need to prioritize that. So you need to decide to yourself, for yourself. So it's it's setting about that schedule to say, I have got five or eight or ten hours a week or twenty hours, depending on what you're studying. True. And you are willing to give up something else because if you're speaking about balance, you know it's like a balance sheet. You have yes. to take away from one area <laughs> and you have to, uh, you know, put that on the other side so that your True. your journals can balance. So. 
what is it that you're willing to give up? Yeah. Because if you're just going to enroll for a qualification and you're not willing to give up time on social media or, you know, TV time or Netflix or whatever that is, you're going to stress yourself out because you're still going to want to do the things that relax you, um, but it's going to be difficult to balance this mm-hmm. new life. Because once you're working, it's it's a very different world, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, you, you've got the demands of work. You have to perform at work to keep your job, uh, to advance your career. So when you speak about work-life balance, you have to see what it is. But the important thing is, you know, keep a keep a healthy lifestyle, sleep enough. Those things are non-negotiable. True, um, true. The, the work you have to go and do for eight hours. But if you want to become a manager or an executive, you're going to have to put in a whole lot more hours. Put up your hand for a whole lot of tasks when the opportunities come. You can't just sit back, you know, um, and, and do that. So so decide what's important to you. Balance that and you will make it work. True. And in today's complex, interconnected world, how do multiple qualifications contribute to innovative problem solving and what unique contributions can students with diverse skill sets make to their workplace? Well, importantly for employers, if somebody has got multiple experiences and multiple qualifications, it means that they are, you know, they set apart from the rest. And it also shows that they have got uh, a, a cognitive ability to assimilate information and also that they can then they can then layer, they can cascade, they can work in this complex environment uh, because they, they have this varied skill set. But it show, also shows to an employer that they are willing to learn, they are willing to adapt, um, and innovation is, is the most important thing. So True. we speak about not just what you learn, but what you unlearn. So people, as I said earlier, you know, they'll study in the 1980s and they haven't moved on. They haven't learned any new software packages. So they're redundant to an employer. Um, And and if you are young and you're coming with these skill sets, or even if you're old and you've kept on adapting to these skill sets, make sure that you're current. For employers, that's the most valuable thing. For an employer, the most valuable thing is skill, the correct attitude, and people with the right qualifications. True, true. And that are team players. And, and that is really the magic mix that, that we need to understand. And now with technological advancement and shifting industry needs, how can individuals stay adaptable and continuously develop new skills to succeed in interdisciplinary careers? And what resources are there available? Well, there's lots of resources available. We spoke about those massive online open courses. And yes. please go on to them, right? edX, yeah. <laughs> Harvard X, Coursera. I keep on saying it as if I work for them, but I yes. certainly don't. I myself am enrolled in three or four of those courses at any time because it is everything from medical uh, medical science to engineering to languages to IT, um, you know, Java programming, everything is there. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are the resources that are available. The internet, in the time that we live in this digital age, knowledge is a click away. So true, it's about true. the time you're going to invest uh, in doing that. And you need to keep yourself abreast of developments. You can't go into an interview now, you've studied commerce, and you can't articulate what program, what, what software packages. So you need to know what, what SAP does, what Oracle does. You can't true. just go yeah. in with your degree and think that an employer is going to take you because you're working on ICT systems. And if you have got no idea what those systems are, the employer and somebody else walks in that has already done some courses on it, understands the basics. They are the one that the employer will give the opportunity. Will definitely look. Yes, definitely. They will make sure that uh, you're losing on that because you're not willing to work hard or go that extra mile. And what role do you think multiple qualifications play in addressing current skill gaps in the labor market and the pressing challenge of unemployment, especially among the youth? Well, you know, youth unemployment is a very complex um, area. And I said earlier that we've got the fourth highest youth unemployment in the world. True. Now, that, that, but when we look at graduate employment, I, I, I said earlier, you know, it's always, it vacillates between 10 and 15%. Those are for people with degrees. Mm. The more degrees you have, the better your chance of not being employed. So your time, when you've got a master's or you've got a PhD, you know, for PhDs, the unemployment rate is around 1.3%. Um, for masters, you know, it's around six uh, uh, percent. For somebody with a higher certificate, it's it, it's it's in the thirties, thirty-three percent. 
If it's somebody with a diploma, it's, it's 27%. So you can understand that the more degrees you get in the most varied fields, you are enhancing your opportunities for employment. But sure. what does that mean for the employer? It yes. means that they can get one person with three skill sets as opposed to employing, you know, three people. They can look at one person, pay them properly, and you can you can add that value to the business. And and I was about to come to the question regarding one's earning to say, does have having multiple qualifications enhance one's earning potential? And if so, how? Absolutely. So if you if you have um, an employee, as I spoke earlier, that's got a varied skill set, so they've got two or three degrees. Yes. Um, and, and obviously the real money you start making after, so it depends in which field, the real money you start making in accounting after you qualify, after you've done your articles, you've done your CTA, that's when you start making real money. Mm-hmm. Um, with law, you obviously need, to, you earn almost nothing while you're doing your, um, you know, your your your, your um, articles, your yes. period with the, with the law society. But once you qualify, you know, it's not that everybody is going to be successful. It's True. the people that get into the top tier firms. But sometimes you need to slog it out for five years in a smaller firm and start your own firm so True. that you can start money, yeah. uh, uh, making money. But for employers, if you've got multiple qualifications, they can draw on these individuals. So I, I know if I've got somebody with a finance background that also understands law, but, you know, might have done some HR, uh, HR qualification. That mm-hmm. the roles that they, I can put them in are higher roles because they've got higher order thinking. And they've got uh, they've demonstrated across multiple disciplines that they're able to assimilate that information and bring value to the organisation. True. Uh, yeah. And now, how do ongoing education and acquiring new qualifications contribute to staying competitive in the ever evolving job market? Well, I don't think it's a it's a choice anymore. It's a must. It's a must. Uh, it's a must. So yes, you get a degree, you might get your foot in the door, but somebody who's coming with two degrees or somebody who's coming with an honours or a master's, they're going to be the first choice, right? True. Because the pool is expanding. The more graduates we produce, and, and this fuss has been a wonderful, wonderful opportunity oh, for people has. that never have had have had access to tertiary education to now get their foot in the door. Now, the complexity is that we don't pay for postgraduate qualifications uh, with NISFA. So that's that's not great. And the NRF's funds uh, often get cut. Uh, mm. So so we must understand that with this uh, transformation, we do have more people entering that have got degrees. But the important question is, is the economy producing enough jobs? Now, we know if if the economy doesn't grow, if we don't have... Uh, you know, at least uh, uh, four to six percent uh, economic growth. Yes. Um, you know that we can't produce enough jobs, and really mm. around eight or ten percent would be more ideal to absorb graduates and people that are entering the labour market. But yeah. No, I, was, I was just about to say, I loved what you said when we were still uh, starting the conversation on how metric is nowadays is nothing. And uh, eventually a degree is just a knock away. But eventually for you to be to be looked at within the marketplace, you need to have more than a degree. And I think when it comes to the issue of NESFAS, I think it needs to be restructured and looked about. Because now if you're going to say a degree is nothing at all, and then you kind of... Uh, um, let's say a fund postgraduate we're still going back but eventually just want to come to say is there a need for individuals to highlight the value of each qualification in their job applications and how does that maximize their career opportunities for instance as i have a i have a qualification in uh, jewelry manufacturing and now i have a degree in journalism now do i still have to pinpoint out every time i go into for a job application well i mean the example you use is very diverse um, you know, d- d- being in journalism and manufacturing jewelry. Um, so, so for an employer, I think it would be more important that you highlight in that instance the job that you're applying for, and and you know why. Just give because you can't not put qualifications on. You know, th- yeah. the the important thing is you can't lie on your CV. You know, that's a criminal offence, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah. So you also can't omit anything from your CV. So you have to put where you've worked. You can't be selective and you must also put what you've studied. Yes. What Where it becomes more important is when, when in, you know, you're applying for fields that are complementary. So let's say commerce mm-hmm. and law 
or accounting yes. and and marketing, for example, where where that branding and marketing and finance is becoming more and more closely related in business mm -hmm. environments. When it is diverse, you would have to just, you know, I don't think that would be very important to an employer because it's clearly mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, diverse. Mm -hmm. You you thought you were going to make um, wedding rings and now you, you know, you want to be an investigative reporter. Um, so, so just to highlight what the employer will ask you why this journey has brought you to this point where you studied something so diverse. Um, mm -hmm. But, but you know, it's about the, the journalism there. But you need to draw the connection when you have these qualifications because it will set you apart. It will be hugely oh, yes, beneficial true, yeah. to you when you have more than one uh, degree behind your name. It, it hmm. shows so many uh, advantages to you. And I always say the statistics don't lie. Stats is a, the employment statistics don't lie. And it tells us mm -hmm. the more highly qualified you are, the more degrees you have, the better your chances are. And also the higher you get paid. I think a lot of people might look at it at, 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 at the sense of economy that we are they might try to get more more qualifications because it is the money that we're definitely after now uh, last question maybe we before we take a quick break just want to understand how do professionals in specific industries such as healthcare technology finance and education leverage multiple qualifications to advance their careers and as a managing director of such a, presti a prestigious institution can you confidently say that your career advancement is wholly attributable to the fact that you have multiple qualifications so without a doubt i would uh, you know i've worked in absolutely every field. My first job, I was a flight attendant. Um, I've been a full-time trade unionist. I've been a CCMA commissioner. I've, you know, head, uh, headed up HR departments. I've headed up, um, you know, I worked in government. Um, so I've worked in very senior positions. And yeah. I have no doubt that the commitment that I've shown to advancing my knowledge base is what stood me apart from the other candidates. And that's why I got these opportunities. Definitely, we're about to take a quick break right now. And I just want to say to our listeners who are listening to TUTFM to make sure that they send those questions that they want to ask you, doctor, to 012-382-9257. And we are live on Facebook. That is TUTFM 96.2. And if you're on the gram, like we call it nowadays, it's TUTFM underscore 962. I'll repeat that call so that you could call that number so that you would send the WhatsApp voice notes at B or messages at 012-382-9257. Take a quick break, we'll be back. It is definitely, is it 23? Yeah, 25. 25 minutes after the hour, 8 o'clock. And once again, if you just tune into your radio station, just know that you're listening to TUTFM at 6.2. We're amplifying voices and empowering lives. And on like on this edition of uh, Plaga Graduate, we're having Dr. Mayer, uh, Dr. Linda Mayer, and we're speaking about, you know, the benefits of having multiple qualifications. And I think it's very important we highlight that with a, just a degree... It's, it's just like having a tree. Nowadays, degree is just like having a metric. You need to have more. Go to advance, you know, honors or PhD if you have. Now, doctor, good evening once again. And please, let's continue. I just want to come here to say, considering the fact that multiple qualifications demonstrate adaptability and a wide skill in Sedwick, talk to us about the significance of multiple qualifications in allowing individuals to transition between different roles or even different uh, industries. Well, very importantly, uh, the more you study, the more options you have available to you. Mm -hmm. uh, and certainly to advance yourself in the workplace, the more qualifications, the more complex qualifications you have. So the higher the qualifications, um, you know, honors and masters, masters is always preferable. You, you know, Even if you work in government, to be in the senior managerial leadership, which is a director or above, so director, chief director, yes. Deputy Director General, or that, you need a master's degree. That's a given. Mm -hmm. So you can get your door, you can get your foot in the door with a degree. But if you want to advance your career, you're going to have to have these higher degrees. And if you have multiple degrees, obviously what that does is it opens different avenues to you, different yes. sectors, because you need that base degree to get into into those qualifications. So the, into of those qualifications to get into those careers. So. You know, the more qualifications you have, the more you've studied, the higher you've studied, you are opening the landscape to what it is that you can do, where you can work, and the level of of uh, executives uh, level that you that you can then acquire. So you need to decide if you if you do a, a degree 
it's probably fine uh, that you'll become a manager in a yes. couple of years. But, you know, if you do your honours or you do your masters, you can look at senior management. But if you want executive roles, you would need that master's degree. Not always the PhD. If you're working in an academic institution, that's a must. It's not a it's not a desirable thing. You have to have a PhD. <laughs> yes. Um, but yes, you, you need to decide, do you want to work in a particular field? Remember, if you study finance, you can work in any sector. Yes, but true. to work in, in different job roles, you need that underpinning qualification so that you so that you can then um, have the pick of your choice about what it is that you want to do. Definitely. And now let's speak about the roles, right? What roles do interpersonal skills that develop through multiple qualifications play in adapting to changes in the business environment and navigating complex projects? So, so the important thing about interpersonal skills, you know, Knowledge acquisition is what you get from knowledge. Mm -hmm. The interpersonal skills is what you get, uh, what we refer to as graduate attributes. So the ability to work in teams, uh, the ability to to navigate uh, in the ICT environment, those things that that you get exposed to is what is important to employers. So when you speak about the experience that this multidisciplinary uh, basket of knowledge brings you and these di different domains, it brings you a complexity of thought process because you must know, as you study further, cognitively you're developing because your, 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 your ability to analyze problems, your ability to engage with different content uh, is, is obviously developed. Our, our brain is a muscle and the more yes. we do to develop that muscle, the more adapt it then becomes. Now, Doctor, I will leave these two questions for the last one because I see my phone is beeping. It's definitely uh, questions coming in from our listeners. So just uh, want to bring in those questions from our listeners before I take the last two, before come in, take a break. Okay. So uh, one here is from uh, Lesejo. Uh, from Block M because we are a, a campus-based station, so the learners from the residents, they stay here. She says, uh, can you share examples of how diverse qualifications have benefited employees at Rosebank? Well, certainly. I mean, if we, if we look at uh, individuals that have studied in particular fields, um, you know, I'm thinking of, of uh, you know, there's many, many people in the in the businesses that have done like a bachelor's of business administration and mm -hmm. they wanted to work in academic operations. Then they, they wanted an opportunity to move into the academic genre. And for that, obviously, you need a master's degree. Um, sure. So they might have started off in a particular administrative role, but they then worked hard to get their master's degree so that they could get a junior lecturer position. For example, mm. the same in finance. You know, we've had receptionists that have studied, got their LLB degrees, and moved into HR departments. Um, you know, the same for marketing, the same for finance. It, it's about what your plan is for life. It's not about the qualifications necessarily, because they just enable your journey. So make sure that that um, you know what you're studying. And and in our in our organisation, if you're a top performer, we give a hundred percent bursary because we want, we encourage our staff to study. We want them yes. to advance themselves. And if we can't give them that opportunity, we encourage, I give people time off to go for interviews. If we mm -hmm. don't have a job in the business that, that really showcases the skills and the talent and the experience that they've acquired, we fully support them to go somewhere else and to advance their career. You don't find many employers that, that have that mindset, but I certainly don't want to hold people back. You need to be the best that you want to become. Uh, and you can only do that through education. Nobody's coming to save you. You need to save yourself. And uh, Tabule Dwaba from uh, Sochanguve Block A, she's saying, how important, is, how important is it to pursue ongoing education and qualifications in today's job market? It's a must. It's no longer a, a, a maybe. Uh, as we said, you know, with your with your first degree, yes, you, yeah. you probably will get a job. But you need to be happy, you know, with it taking longer for you to get promotions if you're not also investing in, in the education to elevate your education level. And uh, this is, I think, uh, Junior Tema was saying, what advice would you give to recent graduates about pursuing multiple qualifications? Well, if you've just graduated, I mean, obviously you need to decide, 
Do you want to go and work now? Do you want to get experience with that and study whilst you're working? Or is it that you've studied something and you, you can't see that you're going to go and work in that field and you now want to pursue another degree? So the issue is really decide if one degree is what you want to do. And for some people, it's fine. But if you have a journey and, and you want to be multi a multidisciplinary expert where you know that, that individuals will will want you, that will it will set you apart. Um, right now, you know, there's there's a position, for example, in our organization, and mm -hmm. we are bidding for one candidate, an HR candidate, that many other companies are bidding for. And this person has studied three degrees, has got experience, is young, is in the early 30s, and uh, is is we we bidding for for this person for an executive role. So be that person where you've got the skill sets, you've got the experience, and people are running after you to employ you. That's the ideal position you want to land on. All right. And I'm hearing from my producers that there's a voice note on our WhatsApp line. Please allow us this moment to take it and hear what the listener is saying. Now, Dr. Adar, that, that one, it's, uh, it's not even a question, but she's saying thank you so much for a very insightful conversation. She's learning a lot, especially now that we are facing the fourth industrial revolution. She's definitely very grateful for your insightful uh, responses. And she definitely, definitely hopes this conversation goes on into the future so that we understand what more uh, should we learn about. Thank you so much, Dr. Mayer, for such an insightful conversation. Thank you so much for the comments. I really appreciate it. Right. And uh, yeah. taking a few, all right, yeah. Uh, this is an lady, Sabutuma, uh, from blog uh, El Soshanguwe, to say, uh, in terms of future opportunities, she says, what future opportunities do you foresee for professionals with multiple qualifications? Well, employers are going to want that um, as as a base uh, into the future. So, as we said, you know, employers want the people that are the most highly qualified and have multidisciplinary uh, experiences and qualifications. So, into the future, it's going to become increasingly more important as we are in this adaptive age, in this rapidly evolving technology age, where you can see people use Chat GPT to answer the emails, uh, you know, and some more and more jobs will be impacted. So make sure that you're in a field and ensure that you study and that you've got a multidisciplinary set of skills that set you apart from everybody else. Right. And here we're having uh, Jessica Lisiba from Mamilodi Ace to say is in terms of networking tips, how can individuals effectively network across different industries to leverage their varied qualifications? Well, it's important that you that you are involved with the young uh, professionals programs in all of the professional and statutory bodies that exist. So make sure that you participate there, that you meet employers, um, that you that you are engaging with them, uh, that you are engaging in career fairs, uh, that you set yourself up whenever there are uh, particular events being hosted by organisations. Uh, engage with the people that are there so that they get to know about you. Uh, keep your CV current. Make sure that you that you uh, highlight yourself, that your LinkedIn profile, for example, is yes. well, not just your tick. And employers go to your social media. So you can't be yes. posting things about drinking. And let me tell you right now, if yes. every employer does a social media audit and you need to make sure that you've got a clean footprint in True. terms of all your social media activity. Um, so so as much as you, you do these other things to to engage with employers, send your CV out. When they start digging, make sure that there's nothing that's going to embarrass you mm -hmm. or prevent mm -hmm. you from getting a job. True. And uh, we have another one here from, uh, who is this? Emily Van Dimieve from Amanda Sayer, who's saying from an, employer's, uh, from an employer's point of view, how do you evaluate candidates with diverse qualifications? Well, we see them as very positive. We see them as being agile in the business. So they might come in at a particular career, but we know that we can advance them into other levels, other, other positions in organizations. So always a positive, never a negative to have more than one qualification and more, one, more than one discipline that you're able to be agile and functional in. I, I see, you know, many of the questions, it might sound like I'm repeating myself, no, but yes, I'm repetitive. Yes, yes but, true. But the issue is the answer is not going to change. Having a, a second and a third and a fourth degree is going to set you apart. 
And True. it is what's going to make employers want you above other candidates. And the last one from our listeners here, uh, Tawo Sunwamadi from uh, Soshanguve Block L, is saying, what challenges do individuals face when trying to integrate multiple qualifications into their career paths and how can they overcome them? Well, the thing is that it, must, it mustn't be so diverse that it is, you know, you use the example, a uh, great example of somebody yes. with jewelry and journalism, you know, that you're going to have a problem there, unless you're going to be a journalist writing about jewelry. Um, yes. But but if it is around uh, showcasing those skills, it will be very simple for for you to to navigate that, to show the the connection. Why it is that you you've adapted and built these particular skill sets? Employers will never see it as a negative thing; always as a positive. True, true, definitely. And the last two questions from my side, and Doctor, we have to call it tonight. I want to say here. Do you think multiple qualifications play a crucial role in helping individuals stay relevant in a rapidly changing professional landscape? And how can they leverage their diverse skill set for long-term success? Well, you need to you need to marry to a plan, like we said earlier, right? Mm -hmm. So having more qualifications, it's not about having more qualifications, it's about building skill sets that are credible and that are recognized within industry and the sector. Mm -hmm. So also don't just go and pick qualifications because you want to study another qualification. Ask yourself, is this going to, am I investing? What is the return on investment that I'm making? Because you're giving away part of your life to get True. this this knowledge set. The time that you're giving up, the energy that you're putting into it. If it's not going to bring you a job into the future, if you're studying geology and now you're studying something else, um, you know, that is completely unrelated. And we know that that people in, in particular fields struggle to get employment more so than in other fields. True, yeah. So, so make sure that whatever your base qualification is, is an easy entry into the job market. So that's why commerce and, and you know, medicine, uh, te information technology, we know that those jobs are in high demand. If you're going to study in into a field where we know that jobs are depleting, they're decreasing, um, th then you need to make sure that you that you have these additional skills so that you're the first in the line and not the last in the line when people are looking to employ in those depleting skills uh, workplace job sets, right? Understand yes. how many jobs are available in the sector. Understand what it is that you need to do to set yourself apart. Have a clear plan for your life and you will be successful. True, very beautiful, beautifully said. And lastly, what message would like, would you give to students and parents listening right now who are wondering if exploring different studies is worth the uncertainty and the risk? Absolutely. So in education can never be wasteful, right? It's never a wasted yes. investment. Because even if it's not in a career that you're working in, it's about personal development. It's about people setting themselves apart and developing but if you want to invest in your child's future or in your own future the best thing that you can invest and this is through empirical studies globally is through education yes. but make sure that it's relevant make sure that it is applicable and that you don't just study once that you continue keeping those skill sets abreast of what the developments are Dr. Mayer, thank you so much for your insights. It is clear that the world of education is evolving and the journey through different fields of study is just not about finding a job but discovering oneself. Your thoughts have certainly given our listeners a lot to think about and as they navigate their own educational paths, uh, I have to say thank you and have a good night. Thank you so much for the opportunity and good night to you and the listeners. Thank Goodbye. you. And there you have it. We're coming to an end of another episode of uh, Plaka Graduate, and today we're speaking to uh, Managing Director at the Independent Institute of uh, Education, Rose Bank, Dr. Linda Mayer. We were discussing how to navigate uh, through different career paths from multiple qualifications. Particularly, one can bring it to say the benefits of multiple qualifications. It is definitely that time to come to an end, have to give acknowledgement the two people, not now, yeah, <laughs> couple of minutes to go, but definitely have to say that we need to really work on getting multiple qualifications because we can see that a degree and a metric, it's nothing. So we're not going to do anything. 
on the ground breakers mondays to thursdays mondays to thursdays 7 to 9 p.m on tut fm, FM.